Yo, it's Bogue. Welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the newest major planet pack mod for KSB, Kerbal Star Systems 2, made by Star Crusher 96. In my opinion, this is already the best interstellar planet mod ever made for Kerbal Space Program 1, even surpassing the Kakaoblo system mod, which is also a classic. So, starting out at Kerbin, the home world of the Kerbals, we zoom all the way out past the edge of the Kerbal system into the local stellar neighborhood. The mod has added six new stars. The closest star to the Kerbal system is Aethera, a small M-type red dwarf star about two and a half Kerbal light years away. This system really reminds me of the Trappist-1 system or the Bernard star system, although I don't believe it's directly based on them. It shares some characteristics, namely being a red dwarf star with multiple rocky worlds orbiting at a very close distance. The first planet in the Aethera system is called Surther, which is a lava world. In the KSS-2 lore, it was the first exoplanet discovered by Kerbals with the transit method. The planet info says that the surface screams, don't touch me, although many Kerbals are willing to visit the planet to claim the prize of first to set foot on the first exoplanet ever discovered. Next out, we have Vespin, not to be confused with the gas giant Vespin from Empire Strikes Back, is an Eve or Venus-like world on steroids. It has surface temperatures of over 600 Kelvin and is entirely obscured with clouds. It also has higher gravity than Kerbin and an atmosphere 56 times thicker. Good luck surviving re-entry on this one, boys. Next is Kretel, the crystal planet. This planet is unusually dense, suggesting that it may be the leftover core of a small gas giant whose atmosphere was blown away by the highly active red dwarf star orbits. It's mostly just a rocky planet with about a third of Kerbin's gravity, but there is this field of massive Wizard of Oz worthy green crystal formations in this central crater that's really cool. Further out is Tesher, an exoplanet sitting in Aethera's habitable zone. Although it's only classified as a sub-habitable world, it's just smaller than Kerbin with about 8% the atmospheric density, and its surface is a large irradiated desert with a planet-wide dust storm cycle and a seasonal cloud pattern that's very cool to check out. This is the first spot in KSS-2 that presents a viable colonization target. Next is Glacian, which, like the name suggests, is an ice world just outside the habitable zone of Aethera. I don't know much about this planet yet, but I do know that there might be some interesting non-Kerbal anomalies on the surface that you can discover. It's also got a brilliant orangey-red sky, which is a unique backdrop for its frequent snowstorms. It also has two small asteroidian moons that are worth briefly checking out as well, called Yund and Burr. Next up, we have a pair of comets called Aten and Foi, which were the first extrasolar comets to be discovered by Kerbals. They're both low-period comets orbiting consistently in the vicinity of the star system's planets and can be seen in their skies throughout the year. It has a brilliant comet tail that reflects Aethera's orange-red light. Further out than that, we have the binary dwarf planets Mork and Thur, they sit in a dust belt past the orbit of Glacian. Their low gravity means that this would potentially be a good spot to mine materials to refuel to explore the rest of the planets in the Aethera system. The furthest planet in the Aethera system is Ioris, which is a large rocky planet about one and a half times the gravity of Kerbin with a dense atmosphere, beautiful ring system, and liquid nitrogen seas on its surface. It also has a bunch of really cool moons too. The first moon of Ioras is Python, which is a small shepherd moon sitting within the rings of the planet. It looks kind of like a fat pancake. Orith is another shepherd moon in the rings, which experiences significant tidal forces from the planet, which squishes its subsurface ocean, leading to eruptions from geysers on the surface, and this is the material that replenishes the rings. The geysers are really awesome to see up close, and this might be my favorite location in the Aethera system. Lastly, we have Cryos, which is the largest moon of Ioras. It's another icy moon with the furthest view of Ioras and its rings. Now that we've finished our look at the Aethera system, we'll zoom out again into interstellar space to check out the Nova Kerbani system at about 4.36 Kerbal light years away. Nova Kerbani is actually a triple star system. It is inspired by the real world Alpha Centauri system which is the closest star system to our own solar system in real life. It has an inner binary system with the stars Nova Kerbani A and Nova Kerbani B, each with their own sets of planets, and farther out is an elliptical orbit where another star, Proximus Kerbani, lies. We'll check that out later. But let's first start with the larger of the two inner binary stars, Nova Kerbani A and its planets. First in, we have Syro, an Eve-like planet with rings and a highly reflective clouded atmosphere. I don't know much about it yet, but its description says that it has a volcanically active southern caldera that sounds interesting. One thing to note about these planets, sitting within a triple star system, is that they are lit from multiple stars. Looking from behind the planet, we can see that there is a second star illuminating the surface, leading to interesting day-night cycles for all of the planets in the Nova Kerbani system. 
Cyro also has a small rocky moon called Ion that would be a much easier destination to explore with awesome views of Cyro and its sky. The next planet is the planet Kale, which is a small rocky planet that's undergoing some tidal stresses from Nova Kerbani A, which results in its uneven surface. It has some really cool craters and planet-wide fissures or cracks in its surface that I'm really excited to check out. The first gas giant in KSS2 is Novin, which is a huge white blue gas giant, and also one of the first exoplanets to be discovered in the Kerbal lore. It has a huge bright ring system that will be awesome to explore and check out from the surfaces of its multiple moons. The first of which is Isle and Erm, which are admittedly a little bit boring, but are the best seats in the house to watch the rings of Novin up close. Further out is Oris, a moon spanned by giant salt flats. This moon was likely habitable in its distant past, but its expansive lakes have since dried up. The moon's description says that it has large salt storms and rain showers near its poles. And yeah, I think this moon is definitely my favorite location in the Nova Kerbani A system. Now there exists a mini expansion in the KSS2's settings config that allows you to access the Pandor expansion, which revamps the Novin system, giving the gas giant a new color and cloud pattern, and also adds a planet called Pandor, which is a Pandora analog from James Cameron's Avatar movies. It's super awesome and has giant forests, floating mountains, and many unique biomes just like in the movies. It's pretty cool, I recommend checking that out too. Past the Novin system is a pair of dwarf planets called Mer and Gore. Uh, Mer is a dwarf planet in Nova Kerbani A's asteroid belt, similar to Ceres in our own solar system. And further out is Gore, a fan favorite dwarf planet with such a rapid spin that it has been flattened out like a pizza into a disc shape. This guy is super unique and a contender for the most popular and adored planetary object in the KSS2 community. Now that we've finished checking out the planets of Nova Kerbani A, let's move on to its binary companion, Nova Kerbani B, and check out the planets that orbit it. The closest planet to Nova Kerbani B is Kaith, a world with massive lava oceans and giant volcanoes spewing gas and dust into its atmosphere. The planet's description says that it's a perfect destination for daredevils and the clinically insane. Next is Phaeton, which is a metal-rich planet with a jagged and interesting surface. I don't know much about this planet yet. It looks really awesome from orbit though. It looks like it has large copper veins running just under its surface. Further out, we find Alva, which is a habitable-ish planet that used to be more similar to Kerbin in its past, but it's mostly sand and dust now. The planet's description says that there still may be some areas where life could thrive on its surface, so it'd be fun to check out uh, the planet and look for those areas to maybe set up a colony. This is probably the best spot for colonization in the Nova Kerbani B system. It has three small moons, first of which is Ito, which was formed from the leftovers of a past ring system around Alva. The description says that some strange signals have been detected on this moon, and it looks oddly reflective to me, so there's definitely some sort of mystery here to figure out or maybe some easter eggs to find. The next moon is called Rav, which is an asteroid moon. Uh, the views here really remind me of Seleuco and its moon Tot from the Cacalbolo system. Its furthest moon is Nud, which looks pretty similar to the other two, with the exception of an interesting blasted out uh, impact crater on its side. Next we have AC1, which is a brilliant blue-green comet. Its vibrant colors are super cool, and I bet the science readouts here are going to be awesome. I hope that it's visible from the surface of Alva, that would be a really cool sight to see. Further out we'll find Elno, which is the furthest planet in the Nova Kerbani B system. It's reminiscent of Mars, or Duna, as an icy desert. It seems to have some interesting weather on its surface and I'll have to get down to check out if those are clouds or dust storms. Elno has a singular moon called Nair, which is a super cool moon with a equatorial canyon that I'm super excited to check out. Giant space canyons are some of my favorite geological features on planets and moons in Kerbal Space Program. I'll definitely have one of my Kerbals jump off the edge uh, as soon as I get there. Next, way far out past the Nova Kerbani AB system, we have this mysterious dark planet called Abyss. It's a circumbinary planet, meaning it orbits both stars at once at a much further distance. And that makes it really small and like the coldest place in the star system. It has a slight haze of an atmosphere and what appears to be an almost misty light ring system. This has got to be one of the most unique planet types I've ever seen in a KSP planet mod. 
Further out on an elliptical orbit around the two inner stars of the Nova Kerbani system is the Proximus Kerbani system, which is based on the real world Proxima Centauri system, another red dwarf that is the closest star to our sun, actually. Several of these planets in the system are specifically inspired by real exoplanets that we've discovered around Proxima Centauri, and it's super exciting to imagine that this is what they might be like. The innermost planet is called Iro. It's the third major volcanic world of Kerbal Star Systems 2, along with Surther and Kaith. It has an active day side with dense basaltic seas. It's also analogous to the real world exoplanet called Proxima D in the Proxima Centauri system. The next world over is called Narath, which is the most habitable location in the Proxima system. It is almost entirely dry, with some ice left over on its night side. It is a world of mostly expansive basaltic plains, analogous to the real world Proxima B, which is famous for being the closest Earth-sized exoplanet to our solar system at just over four light years away. It'll likely be a target of our first interstellar mission sometime in the distant to near future. It has a small asteroidian moon called Bup. It'll likely be ripped apart into a small ring system in the next few million years or so, so get your Bup while it's hot. The next planet out is called Cian, which is a frozen water world. It has active glaciers that hint at a subsurface ocean as well. It may be similar to the planet Glacian in the Aethera system. Next is Theam, the sibling to Cian, being another frozen planet. It's so cold that tholins are starting to form on its surface, giving it that reddish color, just like our own beloved Pluto in the Kuiper Belt objects in our own solar system. This planet also likely has a subsurface ocean. Next out is Setha, a small dwarf planet. Don't really know what else to say about this one until I visit it myself, so we'll be moving on where we find Elias, the magnificent ice giant in the outer reaches of the Proximus Kerbani system. It's my favorite planet in this star system because of its misty green color and its incredible ring system. It's analogous to the real world Proxima C, and I really hope that Proxima C looks exactly like like this because it's definitely one of the coolest looking gas giants I have ever seen in Kerbal Space Program. It has a small moon called Ernil, which would be a great place to look at Elias and its rings from its surface. And trailing behind Elias at one of its Lagrange points is the dwarf planet Egil. It is another cryovolcanic ice world with a possible subsurface ocean. That almost completes our grand tour of the Aethera system and the Nova Kerbani triple star system in Kerbal Star Systems 2, but we still have two interesting objects to check out. This is the Corman 16 system, home to a pair of binary brown dwarves. They have a super eerie pink maroonish glow from their low temperatures, being not quite hot enough to achieve star level fusion in their cores. They are analogous to a real world pair of brown dwarfs orbiting in our stellar neighborhood, relatively close to our own solar system. Them. You can find super cool views of their cloud layers and spots from orbit. They have no planets orbiting them yet, but they may be added in a future update. Speaking of the future, the future is bright for this incredible project as new star systems are in the works and will hopefully be released sometime in the future. This mod is the culmination of the creator Starcrusher 96s KSP modding career with experience from previous mods like Galaxies Unbound and the original Kerbal Star Systems mod. So make sure to try the mod out yourself and stay tuned for more. I'm planning on making a playthrough series myself with this mod starting later this year and you definitely won't want to miss that. That's about it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed checking out Kerbal Star Systems 2 with me. Make sure to subscribe for more KSB content and I'll see you guys in the next one.